Okay, it gets the data, gets the data. That's two seconds, every two seconds. So we're simulating here uh, a, a sensor device that sends data. There you go. We have the first send sensor, send IoT data to the internet. In this video, I'm going to discuss about avoiding the use of delay. I will also discuss what is MILIS and why do we need to use it. Why it is more advantageous compared to this delay. Let's go now here to Arduino and open the Blink example. It's on file, examples, basics, and Blink. This is the Blink example. And instead of doing the LED blinking, we will replace this with a uh, hello world or hello. I will set up the serial so that will be serial begin. Then let's put some serial print here. Serial print hello on to indicate that it's on. Then, oops, then. We need to put here the partner which is off. So it should be hello off. Now let's try to upload this and see what will happen. Let's now open the serial monitor. So if you see here, it's hello on and hello, hello off. It's happening every one second interval. Let's change this to something like five seconds. Then upload again. It's done uploading. Then let's check again the serial monitor. There you go. So it's now sending hello on and hello off in 5 seconds interval. So what is wrong with this delay? If you're doing delay, you're actually doing, you're doing nothing. But because this is just a basic blinking example, this method actually works, but in more complicated projects, this is not advisable to use. During that 5 seconds doing nothing, you can do some meaningful task like if you have a GPS tracking application, you can get the GPS data. You can also get data from some sensors if you have sensors in your applications. Also, you can transmit data over the internet and do some interesting internet of things stuff or iot so what is our alternative with this delay the alternative is of course milis let's now discuss about this let's now go back here in arduino but instead of having this blank example we will have a different example we will open examples digital and blink without delay so, this has the same functionality on that code, but a bit more complicated. As you see this, there are some more, there's some more variables declared and some tricky things. But to make things simple in this discussion, we will use our, the hello method, the serial print hello method, so that we will not involve any kind of hardware. Let me remove some stuff here. We will remove that because you will not be blinking LED anymore. But do some hello world printing. You can remove that as well. This is just to show you that this is not just applicable for a LED blinking application. So our goal now is let's try to print hello world on a certain interval so let's initialize our serial print here first serial begin i mean so we now have a serial begin initialization and then let's try to do some printing here let's see if this will give the same result i will discuss line by line later but let's see if this works first serial print hello milis Okay, so the interval should be one second. One second. Let's upload that. 
done uploading. So let's check the serial monitor. As you see, it's sending hello millis every one second. We can change that to 5. So that will be 5 seconds. Let's upload it again. Now let's check our serial monitor after downloading, up, after uploading. Well, 5 seconds a bit long. 56, so next should be 61. Oops, no, 61. Should be 1 because, you know, the, the clock rolls over. There you go. We achieve it. To explain it to you, we need to print the values of these two variables, the current millis and the previous millis. Let's print that. So we did, we do some serial print here. Serial print. Let's print first the current. So current. Let's do that. And then we serial print the, the value of the current millis. Then we serial print the previous millis. Millis. Yeah. Previous. Alright, let's just call this previous. And then we print the. Let's put a space here so that there would be a good formatting when it's printed. And then we print the. Pre Previous, previous millis value. Okay, we put that here. Okay, so let's put a new line here. Let's try to upload this and see what what will happen or what are the values that will show that will show. It's now done uploading. Let's see. Okay. Now, as you see, their values of the current. And the previous just keep on incrementing and then suddenly when the current is now 509 we got our hello millis here so let's go back here and see what's happening the millis function this millis is actually counting continuously it will start at the beginning of our code at the beginning when the Arduino is powered on as you see here the Arduino is powered on here they will start with zero and then the current value will start to increment since this is in void loop that will continue to grow the number will just be transferred in this variable the millis will just so basically the purpose of this current millis is just to get the value of this millis Function. Millis function is built into the Arduino, by the way. And if you look at here, the current is keep on incrementing, but the previous is still zero because the initial value is zero. So it will just keep on doing that until such time that it that the current count will be greater than the current count. If we get the current count minus the previous, which is still zero, it's greater than the five five thousand, the five thousand interval here. Look at this. Current millis minus previous millis. Current millis minus previous millis. That will be equal to nine, right? Or I mean that will be equal to five thousand nine hundred. And if that's if it's five thousand nine hundred, this if condition will now be satisfied. That's why this now will be printed. Hello, millis there. And then when you go inside this before this is printed, we're actually copying the value of the current millis. So the value here will be the new value. Of the previous millis and then after that it will start to count again so it will subtract the current millis to the previous millis so that will be around 10,000 here so if you subtract this 10,012 to 5,009 it will be greater than 5,000 again so there will be our print 
Hello, Millis again. So, basically, that's what that's what's happening here. But the advantage here is that you never get a delay. The void loop keeps continue its job looping. Let's have an example for uh, something like a real life application. Let's say we have four processes and what our processes does is we in an interval of two seconds, so let's say we get sensor value, get sensor value, get sensor data, I mean, that will be every two seconds, then send data, that would be send IoT data, that would be every around, let's say, hmm, 10 seconds, then let's say we get the get GPS coordinates every 20 seconds. So, these are now the intervals that we're interested in. So, how can we do that? How can we do that, those timings in, by using millis? To do that, we need to have an independent previous millis counter here. So, we will have, since we have three intervals, we need to have three previous millis count. So, let's unsign long. Let's do that here. Let me copy paste this that's quicker. Paste, paste. So previous me list, this would be 2 seconds, 10 seconds for the sending of IoT. And then for the getting of GPS data will be 20. So it will all start with 0. That's nice. And then let's do that processes here. Let's, re let's remove this now. Let's maintain the me list. So it will track the me list. But instead of using previous millis and this interval, we will now use the stuff that we created here. So let's just put this, the two seconds. The two seconds means get sensor data. So that will be our interval. Get sensor data. Then previous millis will be two as what we initialize here. It's two. Then this should be two as well. And then for the comment, let's, and then for the serial print, let's say, get sensor, get sensor data. Yep. Then let's copy paste this. So that is quicker. Oops. Copy paste that, copy paste that, then command T for formatting. Then you also have uh, 10 seconds there. That's for send IoT data. Here, then we have to make this 10 as well, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, so send IoT data, okay, oops, no, um, I, get, I get confused, <laughs> I changed the wrong conditional block, it should be here, then this should be 10, and then the last one would be 20, that is for our, by the way, this should not be here, this should be here. Uh, get GPS coordinates. G get GPS coordinates. So let's copy that. So 20 seconds here. Okay. And then get GPS. Okay. So let's now try to upload this. If this will work with no error. Okay. No error. Let's see what's, ha what's happening now. Okay, it gets the data, gets the data. That's two seconds, every two seconds. So we're simulating here uh, a, a sensor device that sends data. There you go. We have the first send sensor, send IoT data to the internet. And then we now the we, we then we now have the get GPS. So let's analyze the timing here. Let's say you have a uh, Okay, let's unscroll it. Let's remove the auto scroll. So let's say you have a sensor in which you want to get the data on that sensor every two seconds. So you're actually doing that function here. Two seconds, two seconds, you can do that. And then you send the data every 10 seconds. So here, you send it at 54 interval. And then, because 
you already send it you already send the data here in 44 so that the the next sending will be on 54 so you send it again but now you also get the gps data which is 20 seconds because we we don't we weren't able to capture the the initial time which is 34 so 34 plus 20 is 54 that's why we get the gps data and then the cycle will repeat again we get data every 2 seconds we send data every 10 seconds and then after 20 seconds we send data to iot again and then that's the time that we get the gps i hope you find this example meaningful and useful because there are many applications that are very time sensitive and you need to have this exact timing and by using milis let's say sensor data you have here some more code let's say every two seconds you get temperature sensor and stuff humidity yeah and then here on the iot let's say you um let's say you post the data to uh, firebase azure or aws whatever method you have and then here they get in here every 20 seconds you just get the lat and long so no delay here but you were able to do some accurate timing I hope you find this application, this tutorial, useful and meaningful. If you have any questions, that just put it on the comments down below. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.